Yes, Alison, welcome to the Silly's Garden. We're in Doreen, folks. Not Bulling, Doreen, it's north of Mill Park. We've got a beautiful family here. We've got Dino, Mary, the lovely wife, and your sister over there, Antoinette. And, and, and Ron. And Ron. Her husband. Her husband, your brother-in-law. You three are Maltese, I get, get that? Yep. Dino is? <laughs> He's a skippy. He's a skippy. <laughs> but his parents are Italian. It Born from Italian parents, but born here in Melbourne. Yes, so yeah. always been an Aussie. Always been an Aussie, <laughs> skipping. You, so when did you meet uh, this lovely lady over here? She, I was her <laughs> boss for 25 years. You were her boss? Yes. I say it was a love, a sort of a... Uh, it was... A, <laughs> work, I'm not going there. <laughs> she, I tripped over her. She, <laughs> she tripped me him, over. I've seen him through two marriages. Oh. So you're his third wife, but you were there for the other two. <laughs> okay. I just waited. <laughs> we're here to see the beautiful garden, folks. <laughs> and Dina's going to take us for a tour. How long have you been here? I've been for just over seven years yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. And where were you guys before? Before we came here, we were up in Patton Hill on five acres with a mud okay. brick house. But that got um, a little bit too hard for me. Yeah because I ended up having a, um, a, knee, reconstruct a knee reconstruction and a hip. Every time he's in pain, you laugh. <laughs> I love it. She's the type of chicken boots while you're down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had to sell the property in Pantanil because it was... T <laughs> it was too big for me and I couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> we say no more here. We're going to take the tour around the garden and along the way we're going to get a lot of more stories. Uh, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Hey Mary, the cameras are off. We're at the front of the garden folks and we're going to take a look at this house but before we do that, let's meet the Jack Russells, eh? They're constantly at my feet. Oh, he's take, she's taken off. What's her name? Jetta. 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 Come, come here. here. Come here. Come here. Hey, aren't they gorgeous? You got two of them. Yeah. yeah? Gozo. Gozo. So Jetta's the mum? Mum. Yeah. And the, the, that's the son. And that's the son. And she's uh, eight years old. Oh, beautiful. Always had pets? Always had pets. Every, every, every place where, you live at. Every place I can't live without pets. That's good. And the only friends I've got. <laughs> He still loves you, mate. Don't worry. Mate. He does. <laughs> so we're in the front garden here. It is a breezy day, or is it just oh, always windy out here in Doreen? No, it's a nice day sometimes, but it's uh, very windy. When it gets windy, it's like epping. It gets... It's just, yeah, blowy. Yeah. Very blowy. Now, you, you mentioned earlier that you, when you first came here, you got rid of, I can only imagine, yuccas, quarter lions, yeah, you know, leery apes, all the above. Yes. And this was everywhere in the front garden too? Yes, it was yeah. all garden. There were I had to take everything out. And, and start from scratch, start basically. Start from scratch. Does the missus get involved? Not in the garden, no. No? No, oh, sometimes when the fruit is, the vegetables ready, she comes out and picks them. Yep. Uh, because she wants the ones that she wants. Oh, so she's picky yes. in that way. <laughs> picky at everything. Okay. And men, including me. <laughs> well, she's, she's picked herself a good sort there, mate. <laughs> Don't worry. On this property here, on this parcel of land, how big is it? Approximately? It's uh, 640 square metres. And you've got over 20, 25? 25, 25 fruit trees. You planted yourself yes, here? Yes, yeah. And they're all productive? Most of them are pretty good? The other yeah, ones they're, are young. No, they're very good. I'm, uh, I, I'm surprising myself with the ground that I had yeah. to what I've got now. Yeah, do you want to take us for a tour and have a yeah. look at some of them? let's go. Let's start from over here. Let's come. It's winter time folks and it's time to be planting your fruit trees. Now whether you like to plant a citrus tree or a dwarf nectarine just like this one here, what we need to look out for is dead disease and damaged branches. Now as you can see here this nectarine has got a couple of broken branches on it and we're going to prune these off using our Falco secateurs here. This is a small handle secateur, ideal for people with small hands. Now when you've got a broken branch like that it's important that you remove it straight away and it's even more important that the secateurs that you use or any cutting tool you use is always clean so make sure you clean and before and after you cut. So when cutting off a branch like this, make sure the blade on the secateur is facing down towards the center of the plant itself. It's not on the opposite side. It's important that you do a slight angle cut like that so no water sits on the end of the branch because that could also cause disease to occur. Once you finish doing your cuts like that, make sure you clean your secateurs. Using methylated spirits sprayed onto the cutting blade is all you need to do. Looking at this orange tree, you can see signs of severe damage caused by leaf miner. Now all this new growth 
growth has to be removed and burnt, otherwise it'll spread throughout the rest of the tree. And now when pruning it, you can't go past your falco secateurs. There's a size and shape for every hand. And once you've done that, folks, again, as we said, always clean your secateurs at the end. The falco range are about the best you can get in the market. And if they are running a little bit blunt, you can sharpen them yourself as well, quite easily using a falco sharpening tool. Turn the blade facing towards you like that, and with the sharpening tool, sit it on the blade on a slight angle, and not pressing too hard, just run it across evenly like that, at the same angle as what the blade is. Yeah, that's sharp. Now if you need to, just the one time on the other side to get rid of the burrs, once you've done that. And then give it a nice clean again, and pack away, ready for the next day's pruning. Falco Secateurs, Maresi. If you like Vasily's Garden, then you'll love Vasily's Garden to Kitchen magazine. Available at all good news agencies. Subscribe now at vasilysgarden.com. Hello folks and welcome. I want to talk today about a wonderful herb and everyone would pretty much know it. It's rosemary. I want to introduce rosemary to you for one reason and very specifically rosemary is a wonderful tonic for the liver. Really it assists to be able to break down fat solubles and get into that liver and start to support it. It supports it through high powered antioxidants that are in these leaves. So when you think about supporting the liver Really, when you start looking at a few combinations, rosemary can be the mainstay. Some people love the taste of rosemary, while with others, it's just a fraction challenging. So with the rosemary, you could actually put some peppermint with the rosemary. And peppermint and rosemary go beautifully together. If you're wanting to support your liver, and the liver is a very important organ. And more specifically, you need to be able to keep that running beautifully and keep all your levels going really well. Bring rosemary in on a regular basis to be able to assist and support the liver. The better your liver functions, the better your cholesterol is. And the better your blood flow is, the better every organ in your body is. So doesn't it make sense that if we want an all rounder, put in something like rosemary. It's so important to have your blood supply beautifully toned, your liver functioning well, and you will be the recipient of all of that by having a very healthy body. And very specifically also as a little added bonus, have a vibrant immune system, which is what we all need. So folks, until next time, find happiness in every moment and keep getting into rosemary. And no, I'm not eating a chili today. No, don't eat hot. <laughs> today, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, that one there is your sweet. Bro your brother-in-law likes it? He does. Yeah? Yeah. All right, you're our taste tester. Come here, come here for a second. You eat chili? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Give me a rating out of 10, how hot this one? It should be hot. It should be hot. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting there. <laughs> Give, me time. Give me time. You'll be right with that? Oh, here we go. We hit the sea down. Is that, what's it out of 10? Five, six? About seven. About seven? You've got this planted out with a chili. How long, how old are these chilies? They look like they're more than one year old. No, they're only one year they're old. They're only one year old? Yeah, yeah, they're only one. But th that's a different variety, that one over yeah. there. They're sweeter. Yeah? This, I'm not going to try it anyway. No, but it's So it's you just use this for a sort of plants, like the chilies, and do you change it or do you keep oh, them? Oh, no, no, I, I won't keep it because the frost we get here burns them. So I can't take, I have to replant the new ones again. Do you reckon the chilies won't last? I'm going to leave them there. Yeah. Last year I had to change them, but yeah. I'm going to try and leave them as long as they are. But one of them, one of the plants, are already looking like me. 
<laughs> Actually, you're right. It's withered away, that one there, hasn't it? Yeah, so part of the root system on that one's gone. Well, we've had a look at the front garden, folks, and this is a nice area where you've basically established some beautiful plants. Enjoying it, you've got a variety of productive plants and flowering plants. And some cuttings I see as well there, too. I've got some extra. Um, I put four different types of um, roses, garlic in there, and I've got the roses. To oh, okay. I thought they were seeding things for a second. They, they, there's they garlic are, in there as well. There's garlic in there. Some people gave me some extra garlic, yep. and I'll see what sort of garlic I'm going to produce. I put that there so I remember which ones I've got. Oh, so the roses aren't there to grow? Oh, they're there to, to grow, but I didn't know where to put them, so I had no. Stuck it with the garlic. <laughs> there you go. The best way to look after your plants is with Vasili's Easy Hand Spray. Order your sprayer now, available only at vasilisgarden.com. As the seasons come and go, we not only have the pleasure of experiencing the amazing weather that comes with each season, we also have the pleasure of enjoying the beautiful fresh seasonal produce that nature has to offer us as well. And now that it's winter, it's the season for citrus fruit, as well as leafy green vegetables. So today I'm exploring the delicious flavours of citrus fruit mixed with leafy greens. And for those who live in the tropical region of Australia, I'm also including some tropical fruit for that tropical twist. The ingredients the ingredients included are half a cup of pomegranate seeds. Pomegranates are one of the oldest fruits around. They are rich in nutrients and antioxidants and they contain a good source of vitamin C and K. They also have a beneficial effect on the heart and blood vessels due to a plant-based chemical compound called puny collagens, which is found in pomegranates. Next, I'm adding one mandarin. Mandarines have a good source of dietary fibre and are very low in cholesterol and saturated fats. They have high antioxidant levels, which works by detoxifying the body to fight free radicals and prevent disease. Mandarines are also a great source of vitamin A. I have a handful of kale leaves soaked in cold water for about 10 to 15 minutes before juicing, as this will help extract the most amount of nutrients. Next, I'm adding half an apple with the seeds removed. I've got a quarter cup of frozen mango pieces thawed for about 15 minutes before juicing. Now, did you know that one medium ripe mango provides three times the daily vitamins of vitamin A and vitamin C? As well as half a cup of chopped pineapple, pineapples are a superfood that contain nutrients that work by detoxifying the body and stimulate kidney function. They also fight and soothe intestinal disorders and help to break up blood clots. I'm also adding a small handful of pasta parsley leaves and half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of chopped ginger. So let's get started. Smoothies and juices are a great way of adding ingredients that you would otherwise not eat on their own. And by combining them with other nutritious ingredients that you do like is a great way to have them. Using a Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer will ensure that you not only receive all these nutritious benefits, but also get to enjoy a great tasting juice. And there you have it, a super nutritious juice that tastes great and it's made with my Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer. If you like this recipe and many more just like it, visit our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. See you next time. For all you who want to grow a citrus tree, they love their iron, their nitrogen and good organic matter to keep them luscious green and lots of flowers and fruit on the tree. Now this one here is a little bit small here. We'll find out from Dino exactly what he feeds his tree to get it to green up because you can see it started to green again. A little bit of yellowing in the middle and also controlling citrus gall wasp, which are those lumps that appear on the branches causing it to cull us over. Let's go find Dino. So what do you feed your lemon tree? Okay, I've got chicken manure in yep. there, yep. and then I've got iron, I've dug some iron, I've got a steel rod in there because that likes the... The, um, the rust, the, the rust. iron from the, the steel rod. It's for, that's a lot of iron rods underneath there. So you've buried iron rods in there, and that, that works for you? Does so it far, it's, it's, it's about uh, five years old, but I, it's starting to grow. Oh, it's a dwarf, is it? No, oh. it's supposed to be a, a big tree, but it's struggling because when when the nectarine tree is in, in summertime, yeah. it's in the it's, shade too much. Ah, uh, it's overshadowing it. 
and I've got some citrus uh, uh, citrus grub, whatever you call it. <laughs> citrus, sorry, citrus gall wasp. Citrus gall the, wasp. The lumps. The yeah. lumps, and I, I didn't want to cut with it where it is, so yeah. I cut it with a knife yep. and put. Um, uh, oil. oil, white oil on there. Okay, to kill off the citrus gall wasp. Oh, if you don't know what we're talking about, it's a lump that it produced, produced on the branch. It's an insect that lays its egg in the branch, swells out, starts to callus over, and you found that uh, that worked for you? Well, I'm hoping it works because I didn't want to cut the tree because this is, this year I've got some extra growth on it. So you basically got the growth from just the iron and a bit of yes, chicken got, manure? And not only that, but when I pee, I take it in with a drum. Yeah. And then I come in and put it on the round there for night time. Oh, so you don't just come out here and do it straight oh, away? I, I wish I could. Why not? Because... <laughs> Everyone's watching. Yeah, everybody's watching me. Sometimes I turn the hose on. Okay. Healthy Habits Smoothies Book is now available at all QBD bookstores or online at vasiliesgarden.com. Do you love moussaka? Well, I'm going to show you how to grow eggplant so you can make your own moussaka. But I'm going to show you how to graft your own eggplant onto this rootstock here using a budding knife just like this from Falco. Now, there's many different types of budding knives and grafting knives. This one's got a curved edge on it. It's got a tapered side blade on one side only, so it's right hand use when you're pulling this way. It's also got this brass bark lift that's exposed the cambium layer, so you can insert your bud or your sign wood. So first thing what you've got to do is establish where you're grafting. I'm going to use this really weird horizontal branch here for the purpose of the demonstration. In this case here, I'm doing a capital T cut. First line I'm doing is straight like that, and then I'm cutting a straight line across the top. Then using the brass bark lifter, just get it underneath the skin and carefully peel it back to expose the white wood or the cambium layer, just like that. So that's ready now. Now we get our sample here, and I'm using something that's relatively sort of semi-hardwood, nothing too young. Cut all the leaves off because they'll take up too much energy and moisture out of the plant, like that. That's all we need. Even take that leaf off, we don't need that one. So we're going to insert this. Technically what we're doing is a graft using a budding technique. So next we need to cut a splice across the bottom of this here so we can insert it. And carefully, with the knife, because this is super sharp, cut through. Oh, perfect. Now we line it up with our sample there, slide it underneath the bark, and that's a perfect match. Sits there beautifully. Bit of a bend in there, but I'm sure nature will find its way to grow back up again. Now, all we need to do here is tape it over using our buddy tape. Buddy tape is about the best product you can use because one little piece will stretch out to about 30 centimeters in length, and it's self-adhesive too. But there you go, folks. Now you too can graft your own eggplants if you want an early crop to make musaka for everybody to enjoy. Now remember, always clean, sterilise and sharpen your tools. And at the end of a hard day's work, it doubles up as a bottle opener. The Falco Range, available at all leading garden centres and hardware stores. Maresi. Check this place out. This is good. This is really nice. So you've got little pockets of garden sections everywhere around the property, haven't you? Yes, I've got all these beds here. And you built these ones too. I love how you've done, some of them are larger on the bottom, so you've got a two-tier effect going on there. Yes, uh, I, I wanted to have a bit of colour. Yep. Not only vegetables, just a bit of colour there, but that's yeah. not a weed. I, I use the leaves on that because yeah. I use it for the juicing of the leaves. It's uh, dandelion. The dandelion. Dandelion. You're growing a tomato. How did you get this one up? Well, well I planted the the, uh, the the chicory here, and that grew up by itself. And I'm leaving. There's another one over there. So you got tomatoes sprouting up on their own. Look how healthy this plant is, folks. You got the leaf moss. Is that from your compost bin? That's that's from the uh, when I do the mulching. So you mulch this yourself? I, I mulch it myself from the when I do all the pruning and do all the uh, veggies. So what do you do? Explain to us the process of making this. I mulch this. it. Yep. And I put it in, in a plastic bag. Leave it rot a while. 
and then I put it around. Did you plant this? Yeah, that's all planted there. That's the insulation for when, when uh, we get the hot summer. Okay. That insulates the brick wall. It works? Beautifully. Beautifully. Yeah. And look at this, you've got an arrangement of pots here and planters, all sorts of things going on in uh, here. Strawberries, you've got celery, celery. rocket, yep. sage. Yep, rosemary, more tomato plants, parsley. Marigolds, everything out of season, you've got it growing here. The marigold there keeps the white fly out yep. of the area. Beautiful, it does work, huh? Companion yeah. planting. So far. When I talk about espalering fruit trees, we say about horizontal wires and trying to get the branch to be exactly where the wire is and arching it across. You haven't quite done that, but it's still working for you because you're thinning them out enough so they're not overlapping. This is what I'm talking about. So you've oh, got okay. branches going over here and down from below as well, that's coming all the way over here. And you've got your wire spaced at a 30, 40 centimetres apart. Yes. So they're not, they're well, slightly overlapping, but they are separated so they breathe well. So they don't have to be perfect. And you've got apples, peaches. Three cherries. Three cherries. And apricot. Yep. And uh, three apples. And the three Some apples. More apples, more there. apples over there. Well, keep up the good work. Trial and error is the, the, the name of the game here. Yes, uh, yeah. a lot of mistakes, but you learn through them mm. beautifully. Well, I'm going to go and try all the food inside now. For me, Vasily. Maresi. See you next week.